So I was watching the X Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Welcome to Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiecka, a radio show addressing the many challenging issues impacting women today and supporting the integration of balanced feminine power in the modern world. For more information on Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiecka, visit our website, www.ewwgw.com. Now here is your host, Ms. Gwilda Wiecka. Hello, beautiful ladies, and welcome to Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiecka Radio Show, where we explore the many facets of being healthy, balanced, well-informed, and empowered women. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be looking at feminine intuition and spiritual empowerment. When envisioning an empowered woman, often a take-no-prisoners attitude, wearing a power suit comes to mind. Decked out in pumps and pearls, carrying a briefcase, and giving a presentation to a boardroom, she's logical and articulate, a woman competing in a man's world. It's become apparent that women can do quite well in corporate America. But what about the more feminine gifts, such as intuition, precognition, dreams, spiritual mastery? While these gifts are carried by both men and women, they're glaringly absent in the heretofore patriarchal corporate structures. What would it look like if we bring these gifts into the workplace and blend them with a more logical masculine approach? What magic could happen if we unify heart and mind in the professional arena? With us this hour to explore what intuition and spirituality can contribute to feminine empowerment in all arenas is Diane Brandon, the author of Born Aware, Stories and Insights from Those Spiritually Aware Since Birth. Diane has been spiritually aware since birth, literally. She's an expert on intuition, having researched its inner workings and taught it extensively in classes, workshops, seminars, private lessons, and continuing education at both Duke University and the University of Memphis. In addition, she's taught about intuition in corporate seminars. She works as an integrative, intuitive counselor, teacher, and spiritual counselor. Her website, dianebrandon.com. Diane, thanks so much for joining us on Empowered Woman. Oh, thank you so much, Gwilda. I am so happy to be with you today. So much of your work focuses on empowering women. Do you feel that women aren't empowered in this in uh, today in the world? I feel that that has been a trend for a long, long time, Gwilda. I feel that it is in the process of changing in a positive way, so I feel very good about that. But I feel that we do have a long way to go, unfortunately, but we're making inroads. Well, how can we become more empowered as women? I feel that there are several answers to that question, Gwilda. You, in your intro, put it so beautifully that when we think of the empowered woman in a corporate setting, she is buttoned up in corporate attire. She is very logical, very straight to the point. And some of those other qualities, what you termed, and I agree, feminine qualities, get pushed to the side. And I think women, in trying to make their way in the corporate, the business sector, different areas of work, have have tried to adapt themselves to what they perceived as the, as the male model. Um, and, and I feel that we do need to incorporate those other qualities. And I feel, quite honestly, this applies not just to women, 
but to men as well. And I'll just I'll just throw in real quickly here. As I've researched intuition and the mind over the years, what I've seen, you've heard of right brain, left brain. I know that some are um, disputing that theory. But when we look at people who have achieved great things, Albert Einstein, for example, he was not only very strong in left brain logic and analysis, but he was also very right brain. He extolled intuition. He wrote about intuition. He played the violin. So he was what I would call whole brain. And I feel that when we try to curtail parts of ourselves in order to fit into a pre-existing perceived mode, I feel that we're doing ourselves a disservice. And of course, I can go on and on about this. I really feel that our our true gifts as individuals are lie in who we are on the inside as individuals. So I feel that it's important to bring that into how we are projecting ourselves externally in the world. And that, that does bring about empowerment. There, there tends to be quite a severance, I believe. Um, I've certainly witnessed it. It's like when a person's in their heart, they're in their heart. When they're in their mind, they're in their mind. And never the two shall meet kind of thing. <laughs> um, and, and we do and say things when we're in our mind that would be hurtful if we're in our heart. And, you know, the world at large can be kind of hurtful. And yes. so I think people will shy away from being in their heart when they have to be, you know, this is about business. This is logical decisions. This can't have to do with emotions. How can we transcend that tendency? I feel that part of that, and you put it beautifully, Gwilda, has to do with perception. Because we tend to perceive that that coming from the heart is a soft quality that makes us vulnerable. And that need not be so. We can blend, we can marry our our heart tendencies of, of compassion of putting ourselves in someone else's shoes, of trying to be kind with the logical. Those are not mutually exclusive modes. And I feel that it's the perception that they are mutually exclusive that does does us in. When we see people who are who are very bright intellectually, they're intelligent, they're logical who are also kind how do we how do we react when we see that i feel that we tend to respect a person more we tend to quote unquote like a person more so those are not mutually exclusive they can be blended we don't need to throw out the baby with the bathwater when how much we if, are how much if we mistaken being triggered into past damage by circumstances for being uh, weak when we're in the heart. Oh, I think I think that plays in a great deal, Gwilda, when we think of if you're talking about uh, past experiences from even childhood abuse or, or various hurts along the way. Uh, I think some people do tend to develop an armor. You know, it's an external armor. It may be a a false armor. But and and part of it too is our mindset and our and our underlying beliefs. We we think in terms of think of the phrase a dog eat dog world. We tend to feel that in business you have to be cutthroat and you have to be competitive. But I think there are new models developing. We can be cooperative, just as in corporate structures, we have the concept nowadays of teamwork. So I, I think some of that is in the process of changing, changing, but we do have these vestiges that are implanted in, in our mindsets. Those need to be changed. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of people out there doing some beautiful work in uh, restructuring, restructuring corporate America and other countries as well, where it is a more uh, friendly warm um, camaraderie kind of thing rather than just looking at the bottom line all the time. It gives me hope. <laughs> it gives me hope too, Gwilda. I agree. Yeah, yeah. The only role models we have for power in the workplace heretofore, though, seem to be masculine ones. How, do the femi- how does feminine power differ? What does that look like? I feel that feminine power, and this is a gross generalization, but I feel that feminine power 
does incorporate the heart and those softer qualities. It more readily embraces qualities such as intuition, though in the corporate world, they tend to call them hunches or or gut feelings. Uh, Though I will say, I feel that intuition has has begun to be embraced for several years now in the corporate world. So I feel that those qualities really have to do with with being whole brain, because in order to do well in a corporate setting, in a business setting, you, you do have to bring left brain qualities into it. You do have to bring logic into it. But it's it's bringing in the others as well in a seamless manner so that that neither one is kind of sticking out, so to speak. And and um, it's a beautiful thing to say. So why have they become so compartmentalized? That's a wonderful sides. question. I think that's a wonderful question. I feel that it probably goes back to uh, what we've tended to call the battle of the sexes, which is such a strange, <laughs> a strange phrase. I, I feel that we have tended to perceive the differences. We have tended to uh, uh, culturally you know, over the centuries, associated some qualities with males, such as uh, dominance and leadership. And a lot of that is cultural. And, And just as the role, the perceived role of women is changing, I think those other qualities, our perception of them, is also changing along with it. So, so this is, you know, to a certain extent, I feel like it's a it's a gradual process, and I think it, whether we want to say that part of this is also part of the present paradigm shift. I think there are different different modes that we could perceive this in different different perspectives, but it is going on. I think we are bridging differences and starting to see more commonalities and and points in common. I feel that that's healthy. I feel that we can both perceive differences, not just between the genders. Well, but it is time for a short pause, so we'll have to pick up with this thought on the other side. <laughs> Diane and I will be back after this commercial break. You're listening to Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiaka Radio Show, EWWGW.com, coming to you through the All Women's Radio Network, www.awrn.net. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, 
and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome back. This is Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiecka Radio Show. We're dedicated to redefining and empowering the feminine. Remember, past episodes are available on our website, ewwgw.com. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka, and our special guest this hour is Diane Brandon. Her website, dianebrandon.com. You know, Diane, in my experience, and of course I've worked in a lot of different jobs that were actually, a lot of them, you know, more male-dominated, um... But when I get in a team situation with a man that's open to working um, in a team with a woman rather than overpowering, it just magic happens. <laughs> it just is magical <laughs> in a way that I don't experience working with even another woman. Um, how can we work together as a team, men and women, and what are the advantages that we're going to be seeing there? Excellent question, Gwilda. I feel, first of all, and I was thinking about this during the break, I feel that it's important to start perceiving others as as people, as who they are on the inside, as a person, as opposed to those external qualities of male, female, age, etc. I feel that's an important first step that allows us to connect with others in a very different way from just labeling people according to external qualities. I feel that a wonderful magic, a a synergistic magic, can take place when we're working together with other people who have different external qualities from ourselves. And that is not just meaning women working together with men, but but working together with people who may come from different localities, different nations. There is, when we transcend external perceived differences that are really artificial, and we connect with others as, as fellow beings, there is absolute magic we can collaborate we can come up with new ideas we can be more creative i feel that it's a magical thing so i feel that it's important to really get past the ways in which we limit ourselves and we limit others through our perceptions and expectations based on artificial external perceived differences well i know that you know there are some things that are they've been around a long time as far as the way we interact male female also there are some that are just kind of hardwired into us right (laughs) um you know it's just the way it is it's like you know when i was going to college i put myself through college and uh one of the jobs i had is i was driving truck from oil rigs bringing drill chasing (laughs) and this is this is way back when girls didn't do that right (laughs) And I weighed 105 soaking wet, right? Mm. My hair was down to my hips. I wore pigtails. And the guys were very reluctant to let me pop my own boomers on the on the, the drill casing for fear they'd roll off on me. Now, 
why it would be more dangerous for it to roll off on me than them. I'd be probably faster to dive under the trailer, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I just had to learn to say, okay, I've just got to stand back and, and let them do that or they're not going to be comfortable and it's going to impair what they do. But pretty soon we found ways that we could support each other. They could do the stronger things and I could do the things that required, you know, more math or more this or more that. And we found our way with it. Mm. Can you speak to how important it is in these times that we work our way through rather than just try to surplus and dominate over the top of old ways of being. Yes, yes. And that is so important, Gwilda. And I feel that, you know, sometimes when we are exposed to or confronted even by a situation that challenges our perceptions, our underlying perceptions and mindsets, we may have different ways of reacting and we do react uh some some may react in a way of bullying trying to force their will so you know i think i think a lot of us are being challenged these days as things are shifting it's it's it can be a messy situation for those of us who are perhaps a little more aware of these things, I feel it's important to kind of take a beat, take a deep breath, and try to shift our perception and our response in the moment. But I do feel that it's 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 a messy process, and it may continue to be messy for a while. I, I, I feel the pause is very, very important and, and checking in with ourselves. You know, how, how am I, what, what am I perceiving in this? How am I perhaps feeling challenged or threatened? And, and, and what is the true reality here? And how can I respond in a manner that is proactive and helps to move the ball forward as opposed to stopping it or engaging in a stalemate um, in a battle of wills. You know, I, I see that, yeah, the battle of wills is part of it. And the other thing I see is this reversal um, that women have judged against the more feminine roles. And if they're asked to do something feminine in the workplace, they take offense uh, that mm-hmm. it's being discriminatory. And we're crippling ourselves with that. Yes, I think we can be overly reactive, both males and females. You know, if a female is asked to get coffee, you know, for a meeting, she might react. And if if a male is asked to uh, bail a female out, you know, there's a there's a physical problem or or whatever, you know, they they may feel well, you know, aren't you supposed to handle that? So. This, I feel, has to do with those automatic reactions because of the roles that we've been playing. And I feel, too, that just awareness, you know, even training on on what, exactly what we're talking about would be very helpful in, in the workplace. I know that there has been anger management training and diversity training. Um, I don't know how much gender <laughs> awareness, you know, training there is. But but yes, all of this can be improved upon. We're all a work in progress in our lives. We are always a work in progress and we can indeed make progress. Isn't that the truth? It's like, you know, I think it's really a lot of things are coming to the fore um, now that women are, are you know, uh, taking on the same jobs or positions as as men about the genders that are different and yes. like women are so much more complicated that they don't do so well in warlike situations and they don't recover as quickly as men i had a lady on that was was sharing that with me um and so i think it's so important that we kind of feel our way through this and discern who needs to do what in any moment and get the chips off our shoulder yes Yes, I definitely agree because, you know, we do ourselves a disservice when we are perceiving falsely, we are projecting the way others are perceiving and treating us. And that happens a lot. It's it's one of the things, I mean, I see that with clients a lot, you know, in sessions. I'm guilty of it too, of course. Um, we may perceive 
intended harm where none exists. So it all, all goes back to awareness. Well, it all goes per- back perception. to working on ourselves. It's mm-hmm. about perception and projection, isn't it? It's about perception and projection and about our own personal issues. When I was in the corporate world years and years and years ago, Gwilda, I was the first female manager in the marketing department at that company. And, oh, boy, it was it was very, very eye-opening. And so I am I'm very aware of these, <laughs> these issues, you know, from, from the different points of view. And, and I remember thinking... Over the years, if only people would try to cultivate more self-awareness and also trying to work on those inner issues that that cry out for healing, you know, not only would the corporate world be better, but, but the world as a whole would be better. You know, we've gone generations with uh, collecting wounds and not having much provision for working through them. Oh, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yes, well, I, and I can get on my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I always fall off those things. <laughs> yeah, I would too. <laughs> so how do these powers blend in the individual, you know, the intuitive side versus the masculine? How, you know, how important is it to blend in the individual first? I feel that it's extremely important, Gwilda. I feel that we first have to work on our perception or mindset because... We ourselves may be guilty or susceptible in thinking of in thinking that intuition has no place in the real world or it's this soft thing that's not that should never get in the way of logic. What I have found is that intuition and logic work beautifully together, each serves a different role, bringing in dream work what is going on in our sleeping and dreaming world as well so the way we begin to blend that i think starts first of all with sorting out and 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 ridding ourselves of whatever the misconceptions are about them you know i i really started to realize i didn't know i was intuitive (laughs) until i started working with my intuition but in thinking back over the years I, I really started to realize that for whatever reason I'm fortunate well, that we're I'm afraid gonna have to take another short pause I, Diane and I will return to our discussion on intuition on the other side of this commercial break so you stay right there this is empowered woman with Gwilda Wiecka radio show ewwgw.com coming to you through the all women's radio network awrn.net So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, 
after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back. This is Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiecka Radio Show, EWWGW.com, bringing the latest tools and information to support women during these rapidly shifting times. I am your host, Gwilda Wiecka, and our special guest this hour is Diane Brandon. Her website, DianeBrandon.com. Diane, there was one thing I, I kind of wanted to pick your brain about, um, and that's what I've witnessed and certainly experienced myself, is when you're first trying to integrate your intuition into your logic, Intuition, you have to open up your feelings. When you open up your feelings, you're subject to the triggers into your past damage as well as the information coming from the present. How do you start to sort through that? Oh, that's a wonderful question, Gwilda. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one of the things that I am very big on, not only in working with my own intuition, but when I teach intuitive skills to others, is to be able to bypass what I call the personal stuff, exactly what you just referred to. And there is a difference between having intuitive information come to us spontaneously, which is often the way most people experience it, to learning how to access it on demand or deliberatively. And there's, there's a method I use, I call it tuning in, that I feel really helps us not only access intuitive information on demand, but but also to to best bypass our personal stuff so that, for example, our fears are not contaminating the information. And and it, it's it's a skill that, you know, one can easily learn. I've never had anybody not be able to do it, and it's outlined in my book, Intuition for Beginners. But it's very important to be able to, to do that because a lot of times we may have a sudden, whether we call it a gut feeling or however whatever form our intuition speaks to us in, and it can be that something negative is going to happen. But the question is, were we triggered? Was some of our stuff from the past triggered? And so this is very, very important to do. A lot of this also has to do with self-observation. <clears throat> You know the old expression, conscious, conscious living, um, perceiving ourselves, living consciously, perceiving ourselves. And um, I think, too, sometimes for a lot of people, learning to work with your intuition is a process. We become better over time as we learn how our intuition speaks to us and we be can begin to separate out the wheat from the chaff so to speak in oh this was a true intuitive hit true intuitive information from oh this was my stuff leading me to to feel a certain way I've seen, um, you know, we do create our reality to a certain extent, uh, or at least co-create it. And I've seen in myself and others how, okay, I think I've got an intuitive hit. This is not going to go well. The other shoe's about to drop. And, of course, I'm creating that. Yes. From my, so I'm taking the events of the past, superimposing them on the present, and making a rerun out of the future. So then that can come across as intuitive information, but it's really a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. How can we shortstop that one? Well, here's where some other modes come in, I feel, Quilda. And one of those is meditation. Meditation allows us, it's not only good, you know, for stress reduction and, you know, yada, yada, yada. One of the beautiful effects of meditation is to get us into our center to allow us to be very present and centered and perceiving from that very still place. And I feel that when we get into that place, when we're meditating, we are even better able to perceive those differences. So meditation, I feel, is, is a, a critical practice. It doesn't mean you have to meditate every day for an hour, no. <laughs> 
But learn how to get into that space. Deep breathing can also help to calm us. I, I'm fortunate with deep breathing because I, I've sung from an early age. I, I took voice lessons. And so I, I learned how to do that deep breathing. That can get us more relaxed and and somewhat less reactive once we once we learn how to do that. So there, there are ways to work around that. And sometimes, too, when we let some time pass, so if we're experiencing something, the example you use, Wilda, and we allow two or three days to pass and we are calm and we are centered and we look back and review, we're often able to go, hmm, I know where that was coming from, or, or that was that was definitely true, reliable, intuitive information, or that was coming from my fear or my coping pattern from the past. Yeah, it's amazing how if you give it a little space and really trust yourself and each other, that you know the other guy, he's doing the best he can. He's coming from his patterning. You're coming from your patterning. You're hearing him through your filters, and he's hearing you through yours. And if you just give that space to be okay, then you can kind of just stick with it and work through it and come to an understanding. And it seems like when you do that, it's much more accurate for having done it oh, than yes. just one person working on it alone. Yes, yes, yes. Because I think one of the things that happens in the moment, Gwilda, is if our stuff does get activated, then we may go into a fear mode or a borderline panic mode. And so when we allow the space and we revisit, we realize, oh, it wasn't really the end of the world. (laughs) And that wasn't really what the other person was saying. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, a little different subject here, but standing up in front of the corporate board and suggesting a plan of action based on intuition rather than pure logic, it just tends to not be well received. How can we start (laughs) to overcome this stigma? Well, this is where, and that's a great question. This is where I feel that bringing the left brain into it can help because, you know, one of the things that we can do after we've gotten intuitive information is to ask ourselves, logically, how can I fit this in? So in a business context, let's say your intuitive hit is about a new approach, to whether it's teamwork or if whether it's marketing is to then use your left brain your logic to look at how you would apply that throughout all the aspects of marketing or whatever it pertains to so that when you're presenting you're certainly not presenting oh i had this dream or i had this this i'm getting that we should <laughs> yes mm-hmm. Yes. yes, it yeah. bring it makes it more grounded. It allows you to apply it practically to your workplace. So this goes back to what we discussed earlier. The two are not mutually exclusive intuition and 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 logic. Just just let the two work together. They they can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, many of the more feminine powers, such as intuition, are met with not only skepticism, but downright fear. Why is that, and how do we work around that one? Well, that's cultural conditioning, I feel, Gwilda. And it goes back to, you know, some of our our mindsets, our, our, our misconceptions. When, when I started to teach intuitive skills back in the mid-90s, you know, I sat down and I tried to think of, well, what are some of the myths about intuition? What are some of the misconceptions? And I listed them and, and, and I wrote I wrote how, you know, countering each, what the, what the reality was. And so that's, even when I taught um, intuitive skills in a corporate setting, I initially worked on what those myths and misperceptions were. And what the reality was, because we have to be able to get around our cultural conditioning, our mindsets, to open up to these areas that have been considered taboo or weird or, you know, let's let's stay away from that. So I feel like that's the first step. It's a hugely important one, too, because otherwise we're 
controlled by myths and legends that we're unaware of. Absolutely. And that's a huge point, too, Wilda, is how much in our unconscious comes from cultural conditioning, from coping mechanisms from the past, from family conditioning, that we are not only not in command of, but we're not even aware of. We are more reacting than we are in the driver's seat in our lives. So this is why the inner work and the awareness are so important to Yeah, and let's not forget religious dogma. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If we want to become empowered, we want to search within ourselves for all those external influences that have not only affected us, but have also led us to not embrace who we truly are on the inside and express that externally in the world. Boy, there's really need for that right now. We need all hands on deck, don't we? We sure do. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild times. And and everything's unprecedented, so never was it more important to be able to start to use and accurately interpret our intuition. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, we really can do this wonderful inner work of, of examining ourselves on the inside and embracing and developing latent skills and we become fuller in ourselves and more whole. We're also more effective and more empowered externally in the world as a result. Yeah, it sounds like a process of deconditioning, and we will need to get <laughs> get into deconditioning and dreams. Can't oh, yes. Dreams yes. On, the, oh, no. on, <laughs> on the other side of a commercial break here. So um, we do need to take that break. Diane and I will be back shortly to continue our exploration on dreams and intuition. So don't leave us now. You're listening to Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiecka Radio Show, EWWGW.com. We're coming to you through the All Women's Radio Network, awrn.net. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, Join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxontvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv 
Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Welcome back. This is Empowered Woman with Gwilda Wiecka Radio Show, EWWGW.com, bringing the latest information to support women as we embrace our true power. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. I always love to hear your suggestions from my listeners, so you can email me at Gwilda at EWWGW.com and share what's on your mind. Our guest this hour is Diane Brandon. Her website, DianeBrandon.com. Diane, one of the things I really don't want to overlook, while well, I've still still got you to pick on, is um, the power of dreams and how we can interface that with intuition and logic to come up with a fuller picture of what's going on in our world. Oh, I love dreams, Quilta. I've actually been working with dreams for way longer than I even knew I was intuitive. And we get so much information, and we can get so much information from our dreams and even in our sleeping world. And we had just in the last segment talked about being able to observe ourselves so that we can start to kind of get rid of those that old stuff that, that really holds us back. Dreams. Dreams are one tool that we can use because my sense is that our unconscious is always trying to bring us into balance. It's like it's like our friend. And one of the ways it does that is while we're sleeping and dreaming, it may give us some dreams about parts of ourselves that are not in balance. So by paying attention to our dreams, we can use them as a tool. But that's not all that happens in our dreams. We can get creative ideas in our dreams. We can try to incubate dreams for problem solving before we go to sleep. And so... There's a lot of there are a lot of instances from the past in which in which people got ideas from dreams, whether it was Mary Bish Shelley for writing Frankenstein or whether it was inventions like Elias Howe with designing the sewing machine needle. So our dreams can give us a lot of different types of information and we can also get intuitive information from while we're sleeping and dreaming. So I feel it's a a critical tool. I do have a book out on that, Dream Interpretation for Beginners. And and the way I approach dreams is not the most simplistic. It's uh, because dreams themselves, our sleeping world is more complex. But we can get so much helpful information from paying attention to our dreams and and working with them, have it seems ever- it seems like we um, you know when we're in our waking state, uh, because this reality is one we created and it's linear and logical, that we're not um, don't have access to that. Um, Transcend, transcending time and space like you get in your dreams. Mm. And I think there's a lot of information in that process. Um, how can we employ that in our day-to-day life when we're awake? That's that's the $64,000 question, Gwilda. I feel that part of this has to do with states of consciousness. For some reason... Uh, one segment of the population naturally has more alpha brain waves, which is linked to creativity, um, in their waking consciousness. I think we can, I think meditation helps us with this. I think introspection, taking time for ourselves, we don't even have to meditate, but just to chew on things and reflect. This is where something like journaling, 
can come in very, very handy. So it has to do with finding ways to manipulate our states of consciousness while we're awake because we're while we're awake we're not just in one state of consciousness all the time there are different different possibilities so it's important to learn to do that again meditation introspection reflecting on things journaling those are some steps that one can take and how about our daydreams i mean you know we can of course, I'm more <laughs> more likely to drop in and out of different states than, than most people. I'm one of those. But don't we have daydreams? And with those daydreams, aren't we actually getting information? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm so glad you mentioned that because daydreams are alpha. That's, that's the alpha brainwave state. And it's some people would call it stream of consciousness, free associating. I feel that a lot gets accomplished while we're in that state of consciousness. And I I feel that it's gotten a bad rap, you know, in schools. Stop that daydreaming. But, But it allows that free association that is allowing our mind to make links between and among different whether it's facts or perceptions or whatever in our minds. So, yes, we don't want to be daydreaming all the time because then we wouldn't be getting things done. But it's a very healthy thing to allow to happen naturally on its own. And actually, to tell you the truth, research has shown that that daydreaming is the default mode of our minds while we're awake. Interesting. Interesting. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know that I used to, you know, if, if I had a, a job or something that was a, um, I'd find the absolute best way to do it. I'd do it that way every time, freeing me up to go into a daydream while I'm working and come up with creative ideas. And that's really fun. We can really manipulate it, can't we? Oh, we definitely can. We definitely can, because yes, those ideas can come in. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about essence. Exactly what is essence as you speak of it? Essence I discovered through doing my intuitive work. I hadn't theorized about it. I just kind of started to realize that's what I was reading with people. I feel that we all have an inner essence, which is who we uniquely are in this lifetime. It's the true us. It is who we're supposed to be in the lifetime. It gets overlaid, unfortunately, by all the personal stuff and the assumptions and the mindsets and, you know, the fears and all that stuff. But it is, it's our power. And I think most people find themselves living their lives not being in touch with their essence or living from their essence. And so what I have seen in my work with clients over the years is that when people start exploring and living from their essence, magic happens in their lives. They become more authentic. They become more confident. They become more empowered. It's To me, it is hugely important for people in their process. Does essence relate to frequency? I have never perceived it as such. If, if, if anything, Gwilda, and this is, this is a gross estimate, I feel that it's it's kind of the energetic imprint we get from our natal chart, you mm-hmm. know, when we're yeah, born. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant by frequency. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. an imprint. And and that's, my first book was called Invisible um, Invisible Blueprints because I was referring to essence. It's, it is an invisible blueprint for our, for our lives. So what's the relationship between essence and empowerment? My sense is, Gwilda, when we are living from our essence, we naturally become more empowered. However, at the same time, when we develop our intuition and get into our inner knowing, it has a cascade of effects. And one of those is empowerment. We start thinking more for for ourselves and becoming more of our own authority on things. Mm -hmm. So empowerment is definitely connected to both of those, I feel. I, I'd like to be a devil's advocate a little bit, though, because there's a lot of natal charts, and they say, well, I'm a Scorpio, therefore I'm going to be jealous. I've never known a jealous day in my life, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so how much are we taught or conditioned into this is what you are, and therefore that's what you are? And How much is that a detriment? How, how can we learn to just ride the waves of what we came with rather than have it dictate to us? 
Oh, that's so important because when we talk about astrology, we get into what transits and progressions which help us grow and unfold. I feel that going back to your example of being a Scorpio, any astrologer knows that a natal chart is very, very complex. It's not just where your sun was when you were born, for example, in Scorpio, but it's where your moon was, your ascendant, all the aspects and interplay, you know, among those different players. Yeah, it sure has been oversimplified, hasn't it? It has definitely been oversimplified. And then we get those additional triggers for growth. So we can limit ourselves when we try to define ourselves very rigidly. I feel that it's important to always be open to new things, even learning more about ourselves. And of course, we get those those triggers for growth. And I feel that if we are aware of what I call the growth imperative, (laughs) we try to learn from what we experience in life, you know, that that enhances us even more. So I feel like it's it's a complex thing, so to speak, and it's a complex process. We're always a work in progress. Mm. That openness is such a key, isn't it? Oh, it's it really is, Gwilda. I feel openness and curiosity. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Yeah, I, I yeah, love I, both. Yes. Well, unfortunately, we are just about to run out of time. Um, Diane, I really can't thank you enough for being on the show. It's been so wonderful visiting with you again. Thank you so much, Gwilda. It's been such a pleasure. <laughs> well, we'll have to do it again sometime soon. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Our guest this hour has been Diane Brandon. She's the author of Born Aware. Stories and insights from those spiritually aware since birth, and she's an expert on intuition and essence. Her website, dianebrandon.com. Remember to join our email family to stay abreast of all the exciting new things we have coming up at ewwgw.com. Also, while you're there, be sure to join us and share your ideas on our blog. This has been Empowered Woman with Wilda Wiecka Radio Show, coming to you through the All Women's Radio Network www.awrn.net Until next time, dear sisters, stand in your beauty, stand in your truth, and embrace your power. The world needs you and everything you are. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, 
X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. 